The Israel-Hamas war is causing conflict at home with differing perspectives, making for difficult conversations around the dinner table. CBS News New York producer Maggie Cole spoke with several New Yorkers about how they are handling the situation within their family and friend groups this holiday season. War affects Americans at our core, even within our own families. And the Israel-Hamas war has been no exception. We spoke to New Yorkers whose families have been affected following the events of October 7th in order to help you navigate issues within your own family. A lot of us are in a movement on all parts of this conflict to change the world's mind about something. There is disconnect and disagreement, and the goal is to convince somehow or show a truth that someone believes in. And convincing family is seemingly like the closest, they're the closest to you, so by perhaps engaging them or changing them somehow, you are then doing the most you could to change the greater world, right? Here's what the four New Yorkers we spoke to had to say. The subject of Israel-Palestine is important to me because number one, I'm the child of first generation and second generation Holocaust survivors. Being involved in organizing and activism around uh, Palestine for a while now, I have realized how important it is as a Jewish person to be able to like create space for people to uh, speak up. Our grandfather is a Holocaust survivor. He escaped Germany in 1938. One of my sisters is more torn on this issue. Our nuclear family is more or less on the same page. Um, our extended family, um, not so much. Just over a few internet and and text message conversations with a couple people. We have learned that um, we're in a quite different place. The conflict between myself and my niece has been going on for several years. I haven't spoken to my niece directly since October 7th. My grandma sent me this. It was a it was a rhetoric guide from JCRC. I responded, I was like, I actually disagree with everything that is said in here, but I would love to have a conversation about it. And she was like, yeah, I would love the opportunity to learn from you. And we had a call and it was actually like so sweet and like really nice to hear what she was thinking and like her perspective, especially because the person that I'm most confused about is my mom. At this point, I think she knows since we have like differing views, she just won't bring it up because she doesn't want to get into it. If there are things that I don't know about the Free Palestine Movement or somebody involved in Jewish Voice for Peace like my niece knows, I'm very happy to hear it. I will do everything in my power to shut down my niece's, the organizations she participates in. I will do everything I can to do that and I will give her a huge hug and a kiss. Logistically and pragmatically, we're not breaking bread with these people. Um, they're kind of all scattered around the country. I would love to do something like that. I, I inherently believe that food can be the conduit to solving a lot of our problems. And I think that's where a lot of our most important conversations come is over food, especially in the Jewish community. I don't think much can be done with conversations over the internet and over written text in this way. So I do think if we want to solve any of these disagreements within our family, it's going to come from some sort of in-person conversation.